welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house. This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Shady Rays. Unbelievable company, and I mean that. This has got to be my favorite product that we endorse. I have a bunch of their shades. Everyone knows that like shades, you, you end up paying way too much for in stores. Designer shades, they just they charge you so much. And Shady Rays has super high quality um, products, all types of designs, and you're, you're paying a fraction of the price. Most of their sunglasses are $48. The most incredible warranty, they replace lost, stolen, broken sunglasses. No question that. It doesn't matter if they fell off, you are riding your bike, you're out on a boat, you're on a hike. They broke, replaced. Who does that? And every single time you buy sunglasses, 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order. Who does that? Shady Rays. So, Right now, exclusively for our listeners, they give us the best deal they have to offer, a Black Friday-level deal. Use the code HOUSE for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You get two pairs of shades for $48. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find all their newest and best shades. Squarespace, when are you going to make that website you've been talking about forever? When are you going to make a website to showcase your work, blog, publish content, sell your products and services of all kinds, promote your physical, your online business? I love Squarespace because of the templates. They are created by world-class designers and they're so clean and intuitive. Um, yeah, and they've, you've got e-commerce. You can sell anything you want to. You can customize the look and the feel. Everything is optimized for mobile because that's how so many people look at the websites we built using Squarespace. Analytics, built-in search engine optimization, free and secure hosting, 24-7 award-winning customer support. Try it out. Go now. Check out squarespace.com slash mom for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code mom to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace. This episode of Your Mom's House is also brought to you by Sattva, our all-time favorite mattress makers. They are online only. They pass on to you those incredible savings from not having to have a storefront. There is an incredible uh, um, customer service. These guys have mattress takeaway service, white glove delivery, environmentally friendly products, and incredible mattresses at a great price. You can get the type of mattress you sleep on at a luxury hotel. You can get a memory foam mattress if you want the Lumen Leaf. We just got the all new Solaire, which I have to say is the shit. It's incredible. It's the best. You can control your side, sit up, you can lean back. Uh, they have a zero gravity setting where your legs go up in the air. There's a TV watching setting. There's uh, a vi vibrating. The bed vibrates. It's, it's amazing. Unbelievable. It's so go to close. Sattva, S A A T V A dot com slash Y M H and start with a $225 credit towards your purchase. Sattva, we are all in with them. Thank you, Sattva. Hi, welcome to Lucifer's Lair. Your host, Robert Paul Champagne here. You all know my dudes by now, but I guess in case the new ones want to call and come over and fuck the shit at me. 917-353-2913. I bought something out they want to be bought out, but didn't have bought it out. Very boss. It's falling apart. The city don't want to fix it. They're lazy and I want to... Oh, okay, calm down. I didn't care for the new game in today. That definitely too... Uh, too mushy. Too lovey-dovey. Yeah. Ready for the hardcore dick. That, that, that red flag. That, 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 that red flag. That, stroking my dick, man. Uh, Fucking naked, man. Yeah. If they call the phone... Okay. Let me smoke cigars. Okay. My mother, when I was a teen, used to sit and read porn books to me, and we, we had fun. Way to go, RPC. We're proud of you, man. <laughs> that was awesome. Please put up more videos like that. I mean, look, I have to tell you, though, his videos have gotten better. Oh, 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 baby. Oh, oh, get off. The horniness is at a fever pitch. <laughs> And he can't take it anymore. He's now he's resorted to just ejaculating in front of people because he can't take his horniness anymore. Yeah, I he's totally get it. Pleaded, he's begged, it. he's put it out there, and now he's just gonna masturbate in front of you. Yep. 
<laughs> All right. Well, you know what? It's fine. We can just cut that and uh, use use it as just. We'll a, just move it to the closer. Yeah, move it. At, <laughs> move it to the end. That's fine. And because look, mm. how good of a mood did that put you? That in? was really funny, especially within three seconds. He was like, "I'm gonna fuck a gum." Yeah. There's, there's, and that dog was right. I bought, I bought right. these things. I've got these about, and I've got this time that. that that was a very good funny part. <laughs> was so yes. funny. But that part isn't going to be the thing that gets us flagged. Right, <laughs> right. Um, shout out to RPC. Um, a lot of people, by the way, I'll I'll admit that I didn't I I didn't read the room exactly correctly. A lot of people have been messaging me that uh, his intense orgasms are can be too much at times. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? Yo, dude, <laughs> you need to dial that way back. What do you mean? Like and when they're listening to our show? Yeah, they're like, hey, and man. Their neighbors can hear. They're like, I have headphones in or <laughs> I'm driving in my car and it's just minutes of a guy having intense orgasms and it's a bit much. And I'm like, isn't that the best part of the show? And they're like, no. I know. You know, you're right. You and I often enjoy the things that the audience doesn't. And I know. I'm not sure how that happened. Sometimes I really, I re it really was an eye opener. No, I mean, because the I last agree. few episodes, I we were like heavy with RPC's OnlyFans, and I was like, "Do you guys just want to watch him come for an hour?" And people are like, "No." <laughs> I do. <laughs> I love it, and I, so I did. Doctor Drew, I, 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 I did Doctor Drew after yeah. Doc, yesterday. Yeah, is that a good RPC? That's pretty good. And um, Drew was mortified. What was he mortified by? Uh, like uh, I, I'm. I, that was, it hasn't aired yet, but you will see. He asked for a puke bucket. What? Yes, and it, it was so. His eyes were watering, and it was wow. hard for him. What part? What? Remember the part where he um he makes white, uh -huh. and it's a little chunky. Yeah, it's a little. That part was pretty gross. I'll I'll admit. And then, but like his uh, performance, he's a real performer. You know, for a long time he was saying porno actor in his bio like on his yes. accounts and i just thought oh, that's kind of funny but he really performs well now I mean, we know why ah, oh like he really <laughs> really dials it up you know it's a it's a yeah. it's a show i wish you would come like that with me it can happen oh oh the kids are like daddy mom what's mm -hmm. going on i can do that yeah oh you want to try it tonight let's try it right now right now <laughs> <laughs> we can try it tonight you guys are horny you guys it's are crazy horny. Sean said. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, the thing is, he. <laughs> you do it just <laughs> his, like him. By his the way. orgasms. So great. Last. I mean, I don't know how long, but he he starts making those sounds on the buildup, right? And also the come down. And then the most impressive thing is he like, it's over, and you're like, whew, like most people are going, oh, really? Why? We're gonna get flagged because we're talking about Robert Paul Champagne coming and the what we like about it, and you're sounding like him coming. I'm just saying the YouTube standards and practices team will not smile upon this. So what are we supposed to do, man? We just talk about balloons. Just I mean, wait ten minutes, and cookies? then we could talk about. All right, all right, all right. Let's all right. Talk about, can I, no, can it's I, already too late. Let's just go fucking. It's full too up. late. No, yeah. <laughs> let's just go all well, in. Let's dude. talk about my diarrhea. I, I feel like I need to process it. I don't want to get flagged. I keep we keep getting flagged. Well, then I don't. Can I talk about diarrhea? <laughs> sure. Is that a flaggable offense? Diarrhea talk? Yep. <laughs> I mean, look, well, guys, we're all already, the good topics. Look, are... we're already wet. We don't need to wear a raincoat anymore. All right, this episode's gone. So let's just let's just go all in. You know, just have, do do what you feel. This is why. This is... <laughs> we can't. We can't be normal, Tom. We're never gonna be normal. Hey, but but for real. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you think his what what hypes up that orgasm to that level for him? Is it just that he's being he's performing and he's he, performing? He knows you're watching. I mean, I still think it uh, probably feels good, like it does yeah. to everybody. But I think he he's a showman. <laughs> yeah, you know, he is a performer, and I've he's very charismatic. He I, knows what you're watching for. Right. He knows what you why you signed up. And by I the way, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Like the same way, you know, if you're if you are looking at a porn person's uh page like you're there for a reason yeah, right you so he's like off. yeah he's like you know what you want orgasms i'll give you one yeah and i signed up for his only fans it's only great. fans and it's worth every penny oh yeah it's really course. good stuff oh yeah anyways i gotta talk about this diarrhea That's that i had this morning tits. yeah go ahead yeah like don't you feel like after you have about a diarrhea you do have to talk through it with somebody to get 
to the bottom of it and like it's traumatic it's pretty traumatic yeah so this morning i woke sometimes up, when they're really intense it was yeah. i haven't had diarrhea and since we had tacos for three different taco places with jesus treo yeah anyways i wake up this morning let's see if we can do back like a uh, shark lock on it okay i woke up and i felt tired this morning but i made myself go for my morning walk yeah so i walked i did i, I had coffee and i took a normal dump and then I thought, okay, I can go for my walk. I walked, I came back, I had two hard boiled eggs. I was still hungry. I had cream of wheat. Now I haven't had cream of wheat since I was 12 or 11 years old. And I had a big bowl, a big bowl. I mean, I think I already solved your mystery. Yeah. Yeah. And then I immediately, I was like, oh God, I feel sick. Like it made me feel really sick. And mm. then I had my first bout. And then in the car, I was like, uh oh, uh-oh. on the freeway, I thought I was gonna bar for shit. And then I came here and then I, I, it was like waves of Dear Royal. Well, first of all, let me just tell you yeah. what a compelling story you just told. Because <laughs> I feel like the people here, the people at home watching and listening are like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> is a Sunday Times kind of edition <laughs> story. That is really something. Do you think they're on the edge of their seats They're here? like, I mean, I'm just trying to solve this mystery with her. Yeah. Well, is this story going to be optioned by HBO or something? Maybe make it a series? <laughs> well, I'd like to tell you the sad part of my story. Oh, okay. Is that I had to dump here in the office. You have never done that, you said. I've never done that. It was my first dump here. And there was no bidet. There's no uh, washlet. We really got... You know what? We have... We have one. A, no, we have a tushy yeah. sponsor. We should get a tushy in here. I know. You know, spray those... Holes Why down. are you making that face? You're not into the tushy in the office? Here's the thing. I like using a bidet. Mm-hmm. I think sharing a bidet is a completely different thing. Oh. Because, oh. I mean, as, right. as we learned on an After Dark, I have a lazy rectum. Yeah. And I use the bidet to, to tickle it, to tickle it, to work. So <sighs> what he does, what Nadav does, is he fills his anal verge, that's what Dr. Drew says, mm-hmm. with water, and then he flushes out his own anus. In yeah. So that's what yeah. he's yeah, doing. I, <laughs> yeah, I, do, I douche my asshole with the bidet. Yeah. I don't know how to do it a different way. Oh, my well, God. Well, can you refrain from doing that yeah, in the office? Like I could try. Like you just save that for your personal use and then I can use. So it's like uh. every time. So every, it's almost like that's every time true. I go to the dinner table, it's like, hey, there's going to be a lobster Wait, tail every on time, your plate. Every time you, you brown, you have to right. tease your asshole first? <laughs> Not every time. Ever since I got the bidet, <laughs> I've now that's what. That's do you sit down? You hit hit it with water. Well, I mean, do you ever like? <laughs> ha- do you ever feel like you have a shit and you're like, I know this is going to be a stubborn one. It's going to yeah. take a lot of pushes. So <laughs> I, <laughs> yep. Yeah. So when I have that feeling, it's like, ooh, it's tickle time. Oh, I see. You stimulate your anal you stimulate. verge. You stimulate my anal verge, and then and then the all, brown the, comes. all the caca comes out. Yeah. Mm. That's hmm. how. I mean, that's how I do it. Have you been eating Wingstop a lot lately? Still. <sighs> yeah, I mukbanged some Wingstop. Over the weekend. And how'd that go? Not well. I hurt myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of salt. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> and sauce and like chicken skin. No, yeah. It's, yeah. The salt it's isn't not, the only thing hurting me. In that yeah. yeah. Well, look, let's, let's leave this oh, opener going, even, okay? Let's get into the show. Sh- what a dynamic show already. Yeah, this is really <laughs> something Coming special. and shitting so Jesus. Far. All right. You ready? <laughs> yeah. I love you. But this is why we're married. Yeah. Like I... <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. Hey guys. <laughs> oh, Ruth fuck. here of Ruth Butler Music. Oh fuck. So let's talk about my beard today. <laughs> Just gonna share a few things. <laughs> it's like to have a beard. This shit is big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Your mom in the fucking stand! Welcome. Welcome <laughs> to your mom's house. With Tom Segura. <laughs> Tom Segura. <laughs> Christina Pajitsi. Christina Why would you keep this? 
<laughs> Why wouldn't you get rid of that? Why? I'll t- I have a theory. I know, I know. Okay, so there's a, a person on, a woman on TikTok that I follow that's a bearded lady. And she's been like, yeah, I have a fucking beard. I'll tell you why. I got sick and tired of lasering. I got sick and tired of shaving. I'm just going to be who I am. Okay, it's hormonal. I can't do a fucking thing about it. Leave me alone. You can do something about it. <laughs> you can. You can keep going the laser yeah. and shaving like, and whatever. If that was my situation, I would I would be working full time and vigilantly to not have that. Come on, that would me, be my only purpose in life is to nonsense, not have the beard. What she's gonna say right now? Yeah. One thing I like about my beard, I like how it's <laughs> curly. Makes these two ringlets. It's kind of cool. It's kind of thoughtful. When it gets growing even longer, well, I guess it's already at the length where it can go. Hmm. I don't actually do that very often, like I thought I would. Is she putting on a fake accent? I thought I thought I would. Or is she Irish? Mm. Or like English? So this is the camera right here. Yeah. Yeah, we know, dummy. When I look here, that's me. So I can look at myself, so I can see what I'm doing. So I know you're there. But I'm just going to keep looking at the beard a little bit. Okay. Okay. Tom. I'm growing it about three years, maybe. Oh, uh, three my years. My family decided to take a trek out of modern living and moved into an RV while we were there. Living in the RV, I decided to grow the beard. To grow the beard. I tried to get rid of it and hated myself. Oh, I'm horrible. I'm so ugly. And then I decided, maybe I like it. No, you don't. There's no way you can like the beard. <sighs> There's no way, Tom. Okay, question. Who's the hottest girl in the world? Supermodel, whatever. Who's like the know. hot chick right now? Who would it, I don't know. Who's your favorite whore that you want to favorite whore you, know you see you already who do you love like Giselle Boonchin I don't know who's the no. girl the it girl um okay her sure her and then that is. that's she's your lady and then she grows a beard do yeah. you drop her or you keep her you tell her this is about to this is kind of a do or die moment in your life right now do the you beard. want huh well I mean she's your lady she's right your piece. so I go do you want to stay together <laughs> yeah do you right yeah i do and then if she's you like, like your yeah life? definitely i'm like oh okay so i'm gonna walk into the other room and then <laughs> when i see you again you gotta knock this fuck shit off fuck shit yeah. yeah but do you think that okay so you shave it but then there's stubble like so by the end of the day she's still gonna have stubble okay right so how do you, you would have to laser it, I'm guessing? Yeah, go get some laser treatment done. Yeah. Yeah. Or she, don't, or don't. <laughs> and be alone forever. Just get an RV and move outside somewhere. With your family. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, because she's like, given up on love. She's definitely given up. Yeah. And he's there's shaking. These hairs. And then there's like some weirdly like long hairs. There's this Man. level. I'd rather watch poutine. And then some like super long, if I stretch them out, they're like... Whoa, I haven't actually measured them. Maybe I, sh- I should. My middle finger is three inches exactly. So these okay. puppies are about six inches long when Fuck. I pull them straight. Don't do that. Don't pull them straight. On good straight. beard hair days, just twirls perfectly down. But this one, see that? Yeah, what and is you wanna, there? Like, I'm not good. Like, I know we always celebrate people who go, like we always raise people up who go, I don't care what people think. But then don't you think at a certain point you go, you should care a little bit. Yeah. You know, a little bit. Yeah. Well, especially things you can control like this for the most part can be maintained. Do you want to deal with every every time you walk into a store, a restaurant, anywhere that people are going to be like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then you have to you're going like, well, I don't care what they think of me or they could never look at you like that again. If you just I know like everyone would be like, oh, that's a nice pretty lady. I know. I you're know. like, no, 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 no. I insist. I'm me. I'm doing me. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. One of my older brothers is named Darren. When I was little, he was talking about he would only ever be able to grow a goatee. And for some reason, I felt like I want a goatee so much. I'll never be able to have one. And then when it started growing in, when I was like 20, I was like, 20. what is happening to me? I want people to think I'm attractive. Yeah. Oh, no. Wait, yeah. Is but she that's... going through something, though? Because. What makes you say that? Like, she keeps going to this whole thing of like, I 
I was, you know, like normal stuff. I was weirded out by it or, mm -hmm. oh no, what do people, and then now she's like, oh, that was such a silly way of thinking. Well, no, she, it wasn't. Yeah, I know. Maybe she's just tired of the social constructs, Tom. Yeah, Tom. <sighs> Misogyny and patriarchy. Yeah, go. It's, I know. She's telling you that the society doesn't dictate how she feels about her beard, Tom. But if you have a full beard, you should maybe consider growing it because you can do cool stuff. Uh -huh. oh. Check this out. Oh, fuck off. Okay, okay. What? Huh? Oh, oh. Oh, cute. 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 Oh, oh hi. Left, left side, I'm married. Sorry, not available. Right side. I'm available. Oh. Do you think That's they're... the Hawaii thing anyway. Do you think they're... Flowers behind the ears, right? Aloha. Yeah. I love Hawaii. Well, do you think there is a man that would tolerate this? Yeah. Time? Yeah, of course. There are. I mean, they're not like men you'd respect, but there, there's, <laughs> yeah. What kind of man would be with this lady, you think? Um, kind of guy who's like, isn't my wife's beard cool? Yeah. 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 I mean. I'm trying to bring some good content yeah you can ask me questions just talk to me talk to me talk to me love you bye i mean she seems like actually like a pretty lady you know right she has right. a pretty face right it's just hormonal yeah it's a hormonal thing yeah <clears throat> huh i mean it is a choice to to keep it and let no, it go. it's a choice it's a choice i mean what would you guys do if your lady had that would you say something or just kind of roll with it this is a decision that she makes in the middle of the relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like you're dating her, uh -huh. and then, and then after like, I don't know, a year and a half, she's like, "Oh, my beard's coming in." All of a sudden. Yeah, like she said, it ha happened when she was 20. So let's say you're dating someone who's 28, and mm -hmm. then they're like, "Oh my god, my beard just came in." I'd be like, "Oh, what are you gonna do?" And then, and then they're like, "I mean, I guess it's just who I am. I always wanted a goatee. My brother used to always talk about it." I go, well, you know, maybe it's time to, you know, leave the nest and go find yourself. <laughs> Terrible. Any, would you tolerate that? No or, way. Hell no. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to the, the laser place immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. And I'll pay for it. No problem. There you go. I'll pay for it. See? It's, it's going off. I'm helping you. I'm yeah. I'm help you. What about Zolo? Would he take that? No. No fucking way Zolo's taking that. He's young, attractive absolutely not no no chance no chance no would you offer to pay i don't know how much laser treatment costs but <laughs> I, I don't think it's cheap no it's not cheap. it's not cheap but if you really like let's say you really like her and then it comes in you'd still be like we just gotta we have to address yeah. this yeah. Rona. yeah it needs to go it needs to go it's All disgusting right. listen this is a woman's choice to shut her vag down this is what's happening here there's certain levels to it right yeah first is buying birkenstocks you start to wear birkenstocks you decide that you don't want male attention and then maybe you buy culotte pants you know the, or, or jorts or whatever and then those birkenstocks scores. are such a sign it's disgusting I'm any like, woman that wears the birkenstock that is a direct message i don't want to fuck i don't want anybody in my <laughs> vagina i don't like male attention Ugh. 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 and same goes for men for that matter who are yeah. wearing these sandals i agree it's disgusting no they're or crocs if you're wearing crocs i mean come on what those uh those oh. ones right there, the no, the the next one over, the leather, oh. those look like I don't know, oh. just like a bacteria haven or well, something. Well, that's what happens is that under the feet there there's a black rim or you know the black outline of where your dirty toes are all the time. That's how you can <laughs> tell. Yeah, I hate them so I hate much. Them so, oh, I judge fuck? them immediately oh, too. Oh, so do I. You know, if somebody walks up like that, I'm like, this fucking idiot immediately me too i don't i can't take you seriously in a burke but asshole uh, but this is the one official of, shoe of vermont get yep, out of here yep this is but this is the last stop in the woman's world before letting your beard grow out you know yeah you're like hmm. um you know i got i went and uh, saw dr dick you did <laughs> saw dr dick <laughs> yeah yesterday fingered my asshole Hard. You didn't even tell me this when you got oh, home yeah. yesterday. 
Fingered it hard. And I got to tell you, I really now think anything is possible with lube. Yeah. Like you can do anything with lube. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he, he's given me the physical and, you know, checking everything. I, uh, I grabbed him when they check your, you know, they do this <laughs> thing here. I was like, hey. I go, it's fucking tickled. He's like, relax. And then he goes, I go, hey. And I grabbed the hands again. It just made me, it made me jump. You don't like when people, when I touch no, your neck. You no, know, like it, no. Yeah. And I, I, I was, I was super jumpy with it. And then he's like, all right, drop your shorts. And he's, you know, he's playing with my balls. I mean, he's not playing with them, but you know, he's checking like, them out. La, and, la, 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 la. and then he gives him a kiss <laughs> and he licks them. And then he goes, taste, all right, taste test. Turn on your side. And I was like, I knew it was uh, coming. I was like, God damn Did it. you have to draw your knees to your chest? Yeah. So here's the thing. He's like, come on, man. He goes, pull your knees up more, because I guess they were only up. <laughs> like, so you really got to pull them up, you know, pull them up to your chest. Yeah. And then he goes, here comes the goop, and you just hear like, like just slops on there, and I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. And then he, um, yeah, he starts. Well, hold I mean, on. Does he do one finger yeah. in? And he yeah, and here's the thing. In slowly. Yeah, it's like you know, it's not super slow, but it's slowly, and you go like, ooh, right? You're like, oh fuck. And you think that that's the worst of it. And then once he's in, he goes, uh, like jams to, I guess, to check your prostate. I can't even tell what's happening. I'm just grimacing. I'm like, oh, ah, and I'm, I'm probably being overly dramatic. You know, I'm like, ah, oh, come on. And he's like, yeah, yeah. and then you can feel him just jamming it in harder, harder, harder. Yeah, I'm going to come. <laughs> and then I come. Um, so then, and then did he pulls it, it out it and I'm like, Oh my God. And he goes, hold on. I got to check for blood. And then I'm like, just waiting. And he goes, all right, no blood. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, all right, when you turn around, there's some tissues here. And then there's a waste basket under the sink. So wipe up and throw them in that waste basket. And I go, okay. Wait, but when he tickled your prostate, it didn't feel good at all. No, it's not a, it's not a pleasurable thing. He mm. jams his finger in there and then he just like, like basically slams against your prostate to see what's going on. It's horrible, horrible. Uh, he also was like, <sighs> why would you do that? Why would you mock my pain? <clears throat> why? I've given birth to two of our children. Oh, it's a I bet, small price to pay. I bet that was tough. <laughs> God. Oh, get off. Everybody knows that's a fucking orgasm for a woman to give birth. <laughs> It's nothing but clit stimulation for hours. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> You're so this retired. is childbirth right here. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Does he say anything funny while he's fingering? He did butt? the first time. He did the first time. The first time I put it in my act, he goes, all right, you're going to feel a little pressure. And that is my cock, my finger. <laughs> he did that. My doctor did that. Then, um, <laughs> dude, because I'm, I'm 41, he goes, yeah. all right, you need to check everything. I have fucking 15 appointments next week. I know. Yeah. Welcome to the 40s. It sucks. God. He's he's just like, Ugh. you got to have your ultrasounds. You got to do the, what uh, ultrasound this, for your neck. Yeah. Your but fat? then go to your Arteries. cardiologist and have this like really intense stress test done. Then go in there for a checkup with him. Then go to the dermatologist. He's like, do a full body, con like all these things where you're like, why? He's like, because you're 41. You could die tomorrow. And you're like, all right. It's so true. Yeah. Did you get the tumor markers? I like that test. When they take your blood. They took my blood. Did you yeah. ask for extras? Because he's like, we're going to do this. Now yeah, he's then. like, we're going to run all the I go, uh -huh. run whatever you want, man. And then urine test. And then he wants me to go to an orthopedist. For my what? shoulder. Oh, and then he yeah. Wants me to go. Uh, just a lot of shit, man. A lot of appointments. I know. I get. I get my tits done. My cooch mm -hmm. looked at. I gotta get a skin. penis reduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not all it's made up to be. Poor guy. You hear about these real big dicks? Uh. And it's not that fun, guys. Stupid. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> no. Uh. Um. Fuck, man. Hey, by the way, any, just want you to know, I'm going to buy you lunch today. Okay. Okay. All right. Just letting you know. Letting What's you know. up, white people and the rest of you motherfuckers? I'm starting a trend. Look what I got. One, 
two. Oh, show them the bag. Let us see the bag. Hashtag apology lunch. Go find yourself a black person and buy them some fucking food. <laughs> Hashtag apology lunch. All right, anything you want, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. <laughs> Sorry about American history. <laughs> Dude, those guys in the car look like they're so, like, they've just been geeking about what this dude is doing. I know. Because at any point, they could just turn around and fuck this dude out in there. Just like, free lunch? All right, man. Free lunch yeah. is pretty cool. And he splurged. He took them to yeah. Burger King. Yeah, and those bags wow. don't look light, if you know what I mean. I think they were just like a couple extra sandwiches. He's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Burger King. You know, he wasn't wow. like, do you want a number five or a number seven? They're like, how about both? He's like, Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Pretty cool. good stuff. Good. It's a really cool. I've been waiting for these thoughtful videos to come out. <laughs> yeah. Go find yourself a black person. <laughs> Go find yourself a okay. black person. And buy him lunch. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What's up, white people? Uh, <sighs> oh boy it's a good message I, I like white people people have to make a change on their level and this is the difference that he's choosing to make and yeah uh, you know it's, hey it's, hey it's nice it's not like it's a mean thing to do no it's not a bad inherently bad thing it's a good start yeah i like to walk <laughs> into like an all black store and be like guys uh guys and have everybody just be like so i'd be like do you guys want lunch <laughs> <laughs> and they're like what? You guys feel like getting some lunch on me? What? Because <laughs> everything's been bad. So do you guys want to eat? Yeah. All right. Come on. I've been really enjoying the um, flurry of corporate emails. Every corporation oh, is yeah. BLM right now. Yeah, it's yeah. really authentic. It feels, it feels really, really good. real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Lululemon supports black lives that are like so oh, thank god hilarious. okay here at Verizon we <laughs> recognize <laughs> okay that black communities have had it rough uh, we will not be offering you any discounts but we see you <laughs> yeah I know yeah we will be doing nothing to yeah. help the community in any way but John Deere recognizes <laughs> that black Americans like tractors too <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty hilarious to watch corporations yeah. get involved with uh, social issues. Well, it, it doesn't. I wish they would just not. Just don't. Yeah, yeah it doesn't feel don't authentic. Anything. It's not. You're not helping anybody. Like you're just bandwagoning, and it doesn't. It's not nothing. What are you doing? I know. Do I don't you even know. have black people in your organization at the top? Probably well, that's what. Not. That's one of the things that they've been pointing out is the lack of uh, black representation. Well, in a lot of places, but in. Um, corporate america you know sure. like there was something with adidas and nike how i think nike has one black board member adidas has none mm. Adidas also has no like top executives that are black so all the black employees at adidas were like um yeah you keep you know saying all this shit and you market to us but you don't have any but did they send out a thoughtful email of course they did Go, okay, yeah <laughs> because yeah. i need to feel safe then they, they made some real nice posts <laughs> and they were like it's the best we care about you. Here's a new shoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Corporate America, man. They're really, really Oh, my God. And cool. then that actor video got passed around where they were apologizing. Remember? What was it? Which one? The one where there's like, I take responsibility. Oh, my God. I take responsibility. Yeah, we have it here. Why don't you play that one? This thing is so cringy. How embarrassing. So cringy. Oh man. my gosh. There it is. I mean, I look, I'm supporting the cause and I but I there's know. some of it's just so insincere. What it is this too. Is nutty. This is the difference between <laughs> comedians and actors. It really is. Actors are like, man, they just they're Oof. so intent they so intensely yes. feel everything. Yes. I mean, this thing is like I oh. take responsibility. Uh -huh. Responsibility. Look at this guy. I take responsibility. <laughs> oh my God. I take responsibility. <laughs> I take responsibility. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh. I didn't for know every that. time it was easier to ignore than Josh to call it out for what it was. 
every not so funny joke, <laughs> every unfair stereotype, for every blatant injustice, no matter how big or small. Every time I remained silent. <sighs> every time I explained away police brutality or turned a blind eye. Yeah. I take responsibility. What are you going to do? Black people are being slaughtered in the streets, killed in their own homes. These are our brothers and sisters, our friends. She looks our like family. she got. I'm <laughs> such a piece of shit. I will no longer allow an unchecked moment. Oh, okay. I will no longer allow racist, hurtful words, jokes. Stereotypes. You won't. Oh, not no matter jokes. how big or yeah. small. What, what about, about good jokes? jokes? In my presence. No Don't jokes. Take I away will not jokes. turn a blind eye. I'll never turn a blind eye. <laughs> I'll always use my good one. I stand against hate. I stand against hate. Wow. I stand against hate. <laughs> oh, I fucked up. Oh, I fucked up. Call out hate. Step up. Oof. And yeah. take action. He's such a good actor, wow. that yeah. guy. Jesse from the. Yeah, wait, yeah. wait. He's the most intense. He when was actors, so intense. When actors do the prayer Aaron Paul, thing, right? Is that his name? Yeah. But Tom, whenever you do this, just oh, for yeah. your future acting, you have to pray <laughs> prayer hands, and then you look down, you take a breath. I have diarrhea. I take responsibility. <laughs> <sighs> for <sighs> jokes. <laughs> make fun of other people for the way they look and the way they sound and they talk like this <laughs> oh they talk like this <laughs> I take responsibility oh, shit. for how stupid this video is oh my god I mean it is so it is an acting thing yeah actors are so intense I know and how many of them just God. dialed that up, you know. Of course, and how many of them even way? have? No, I guarantee sure. they don't have black friends or black anything in their life. No. Oh, oh God, I'm that not was it. so funny. Oh, we're avoiding crowds right now any way we can, and that means not going to the post office. I mean, look, under normal circumstances, do you really want to go to the post office? No. That's why we use Stamps.com. It brings all the services, the U.S. Postal Service, right to your computer and the safety and comfort of your own home. You can do your invoices, your shipping of parcels, and here's the best part. They now have UPS. That's right. You can do UPS shipping. You simply print the postage and you schedule a pickup and they come to your house. And like I said, stamps.com, you get great discounts, 5% off first class stamps and up to 62% off shipping rates. Stamps.com is a no brainer, saves you time and money. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long term commitment. Go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in mom. That's stamps.com. Enter mom. Stay safe, my friends. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Whoop. As you can tell, big all in on Whoop. I oh. am obsessed. Jean has hers on too. I haven't made mine girly. It's purple and blue. It's perfect, man. They have different colored straps. But this thing is the person, uh, the fitness wearable that provides personalized insights. And you've heard us talk about it. We could not be more obsessed with studying that data, man. It's just so you start to learn about how your body is is recovering, how it's uh, it being impacted by the exercise you do, and how all the little things that you, the little details affect that. Drinking caffeine, alcohol, smoking weed, all of it can have an effect on your strain and your recovery. Isn't it great to be able to study that the way a high level athlete would? You can do it. You can just get a whoop. For our listeners, Whoop is offering 15% off with the code YOURMOM at checkout. Go to Whoop, W-H-O-O-P dot com. Enter your mom at checkout to save 15%. Sleep better, recover faster, and train smarter. Optimize your performance with Whoop. How about this right here? I take this. You know, some honey bun. There he is. I got some potato chip. Those yeah. are potato. Those potato. are potato. corn chips. You get hungry. I got my baby girl. Get some snacks. Put yeah, girl. Because <laughs> you know, once we lay there and do what we have to do, we're going to be hungry. Yep. I'm going to look out for my baby. Ay, yeah. 
guy. He's still yeah. on a campaign. This you know, guy you know is... how I feel about snacks? <laughs> Just let me eat you. Yeah. <laughs> well, if they put that slogan on those Doritos, they'd sell a lot more. Oh, yeah. Just let me eat you. Just let me eat you, man. Look, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> You're going to be right here. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be playing with the bikini. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Baby girl. <laughs> okay, I don't know. ay yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does he get laid, you think? What do you <sighs> Look mean? at those moves, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kind of talks about it the way that a teenage boy talks about it before he's had sex, where it's like all yeah. he thinks about and he's uh -huh. so excited. You know, it almost feels like I think he's I think he's speaking from experience. But let me tell you this though. This video won me over until he started air humping. Yeah. Because he offered me snacks. That, that, that's very thoughtful. By yeah. the way, I think he is actually an attentive lover. I, I think now I'm beginning to think he does care for my needs. Yeah. You've never offered me snacks. Post-coital, pre-coital. I don't think that's true. You don't offer me snacks. I've gotten he, snacks before. No. Afterwards? Wine. On. You've gotten me wine before. Get me effed up. I did what I could, you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying... You know, he lets I you. Like he's him. he made his pitch about eating you, and then you sleep for three <laughs> days and getting the just wash them bubbles, make it smell nice. Yeah, you get he's a horned dog, but now he's like, I got you snacks for when we're done. And that, that's what I'm beginning to. He's Dude. growing on me now. I think he's I'm. Switching. I think I'm into it. He's switching from cool guy to real guy. Yeah, to really cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. That's how you want it. Yeah. <laughs> on the side, I got you, baby. Straight up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kizzy, my baby. You want some more? <laughs> Would he, you do him? If he had his teeth, I might consider... Really? Just, like, I'd kiss him a little. Just no. to be... Like, if he was in a bar and he was doing this racket and it was fun, you know, yeah. like, we're, in, we're on vacation somewhere and this guy's in the bar and he's yeah. like, let me eat you, girl, and yeah. we're fucking around, I might kiss him on the lips a little. Really? Yeah, if he had his teeth. Just for fun. Would you just kiss him on the pee pee a little too? No, but I like I you know I'd like dirty dance with him a little just for fun. I would but I would watch. I would. <laughs> yeah, how you gonna see it? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Joseph. Ooh, Joseph. That's his name. That's his name. Ooh. Yes, Joseph. Yes. Ooh, put it in me. <laughs> I'm gonna make you cry. <laughs> Oh. This is what junior high boys are like. You're absolutely yeah, right. Like they, they hump stuff and they pretend like they're air humping a lot. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Joseph. Yeah. yeah. This is what boys do in yeah seventh yeah. eighth grade. Yeah. It's That's funny. Cool. I wonder if he gets laid. Someone's got to be. I mean, a a teenage boy would go <laughs> playing with the bikini. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think he actually does it much. Yeah. <laughs> Stop with the jokes. Place for jokes. <laughs> My pussy's bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle the joke. <laughs> the next time someone makes a joke, I'm gonna call them out. <laughs> That's not funny. There's real people. <laughs> yeah, you guys oh, never God. fucking y y y such pussies. I mean, you never. Yeah. You never drink a gallon jokes. of bleach. Yeah. Make a video about Shut that. Shut up. Yeah. Grow up. <laughs> Fucking. So, speaking of uh, different races, I got burned the other day. I got sunburned. Um, <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was. Uh, I decided you were, to, you were boxing in the backyard. Yeah, I was uh, in the boxing middle of in the, the day. We had our masks on. We were uh, <laughs> protecting our immune systems. But my buddy came over with mitts. So we were doing like, <sighs> you know, uh, whatever, working the mitts in the backyard. It was hot. Yeah. You know, it you're was very, cooking. You're I was very fair. I was, I had, I had some sunblock on my head and my neck. Anyways, then we're done. You know, we get naked. We're just wrestling in the backyard a little bit. And then we uh, jump in the pool. And I was so hot from from like boxing and fucking and, and wrestling that I go, you know, I just want to cool off. 
So we jump in the pool. Oh, God. You guys would be the perfect gay lovers. I always think that. You know, so that's this, really cool. This yeah. bro. I mean, he's yeah. in really good shape. Yeah, I took a Bert shower. I did. That's how Bert so, showers every day. But let me tell you what happened. So, yeah, Bert hasn't showered indoors only but twice this year, right? Leanne's told me about this. He's done the hose off. So gross. And they have sex. So yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I she must get UTIs constantly. All the time, from his I'm dirty sure. Dirty dick and balls. He either uses the hose outside or Ugh. jumps in the pool. He's like, "Yeah, I showered in the pool." No, like, that doesn't. Wait, care. do you use shampoo and soap in the pool? He's like, "No, you just rinse off." And no, like, and that's chlorine. He's probably too cheap to have salt water. We have yeah. a salt water pool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you guys, you and your boyfriend were in our pool. Yeah. And I, it's been windy. It was very windy it was, it was the very last windy, yeah. couple of nights before. And I go down and I look in the pool. I go, Jesus, I must have been the wind blew all this dirt in the pool because it's so cloudy. Yeah. And I was really, I've never seen the pool look so bad. It was bad. super cloudy. Yeah. And I was like, this is, I, I was going to go for a swim. I'm not going to swim now. Anyway, you and your boyfriend leave. An hour later, the pool is crystal clear. And I go, oh my God, these two animals were so filthy. Yeah. With your sweat. Mm-hmm. And your dirt that yep. you clouded the pool. It was gross. It was. And it wasn't sunblock because you guys had, hadn't worn any. Yeah, I put some on my face. Here's the thing. Ugh. So I got lazy. I was so tired after the wrestling and the fucking everything. <laughs> I, I, instead of just grabbing the spray and spraying my shoulder and neck and everything, I just jumped in the pool, you know? I just wanted to cool off. Dude, I was only out there, I think, exposed 30 minutes, yeah. maybe. Damn, I was fucking burned. You man. were burned. I put some yeah. aloe vera on your body. I haven't burned. I haven't been sunburned in years now. Yeah, because I'm always paranoid. I'm always paranoid. I didn't have a really, really bad burn, but you could, you know, if, <laughs> if I had stayed out there another twenty minutes, it would have been. Do you terrible. know? Do you know what's crazy is that I remember getting burned so much as a child. Yeah, like all, your whole summer was just getting sunburned, and yeah. I remember just laying in the bed, and my mom would put solar cane on yeah. me, and I yeah. would just be like, like freezing from the menthol feeling of the yeah. menthol or whatever the fuck it is, like. <sighs> and I'm like, why did nobody just put sunblock on me? I know. Did nobody wear sunblock until 19? I don't know. 98 or something. Like when did that become a thing where you, you put see sunblock the on children? Of Charo. Where she oh, was like, she looks. She put like so oil on her, like cooking oil. Yeah, shit, people would. And just chocolate. She looks dark, dark brown in photos. Like yeah. her teeth jump out in these photos, and you're like, "How long were you in the sun?" She's like, "We'd get out there at eight in the morning. Oh wow, and stay until sunset, and just put enhancers on, just like yeah. all these oils." She's stuff. lucky she doesn't have skin cancer. She does. Oh, she does. <laughs> she does. Yeah, she's had multiple. Oh dear! Uh, like chunks of skin removed from her face. Yeah, because yeah. later in life, it's a that's Dr. when Drew it fucks saying, you over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's terrible, man. Yeah, it ain't worth it for the tan. Not worth it. It's not worth it. Don't do it. I know. I feel like we're gonna have a lot of those lessons to with our boys. I know. So I feel like one of them is definitely gonna be like, "Don't worry, fucking sunblock." <laughs> He's already like that. For so yeah. Yep. Um. You're gonna like this one a lot. You're yep. gonna like the way you look. Are you ready? I guarantee it. Veronica believes that children should decide for themselves when to stop breastfeeding. Bethany and Eliza Robinson have been breastfed for many years, and Eliza is still breastfeeding at seven. <laughs> this uh. is Eliza lying here. They take up a lot of space, and it's not quite the same as a little infant tucked in your arm. but. You know, clearly they get as much pleasure and as much comfort as a newborn does. And one of the really nice things as children get older is that they can verbalize their experience <coughs> and tell you how much they enjoy it. Mm hmm I remember it tasting really, really sweet. Her elder sister, Bethany, was breastfed until she was five and still has fond memories. Better than anything in the world. Better than a mango, even. I'm pretty sure that's not good. It's not developmentally. In the mornings when I'm getting dressed, the girls talk to my breasts, they touch them. We've had to set up some firm rules about letting me get dressed in peace. They don't like it when I put a bra on. They think I'm trapping the breasts and they should be free to float about. <laughs> this, I get the feeling this is more for mom than the kids. And I'm definitely. getting the feeling that there's no dad in the picture. This is definitely for there's mom. There's no dad. And this woman is getting all her love and affection from these two children, which mm. is really sick and weird. There might be a dad. 
No. Bethany and Eliza like to express their feelings about breastfeeding in drawings or oh pictures. Oh my God. When they draw pictures of them, it's quite interesting. You know, every woman has a breast that's slightly larger than the other, so that's always featured in there. But the nipples are very long. Well, I don't have long nipples, but clearly for them there is some significance in the nipple. Mm. You know, they don't care that they're stretch marked and saggy and wobble and everything. Everything that my breasts do and are, they love and adore. They like them so much, they even have names for them. Their Christmas names are Milky Or for the one that's got most milk in it. So the one that's got most milk in it is the other one. one. Burby Or is the one that you call Wavy with a pink dot. <laughs> Milky Or is the one without a pink dot because that has the most milk in it. You realise that none of this would ever, ever come up if six years prior she would just been like, oh, we're just done with that. We're done. Anyway, well, what do you guys want to do? You want to go outside? Yeah, it's over. <laughs> the thing is, too, like, uh, <laughs> like um, the amount of attention. Sounds like you've made these kids yeah. really into your breasts. Well, and they're they're so obsessed. We're doing drawings about the breasts. We're and, uh, the whole family's talking about the breasts. Drawings of <laughs> Papa's balls. <laughs> and Papa's balls, the left one hangs down lower than the right. And there's <laughs> nicknames for them. There's Richard on the left and <laughs> Simon on the right. <laughs> this one's Paul McCartney. Yeah, Ooh. I don't I just think this is this is not developmentally. Yeah, I don't think this uh, is good. good. I don't think you should to be to keep like, them infants when they're five and seven. All, and then also like what kid is talking like that about their mom's breasts? I don't know. I've, I've never had a kid like, ah oh, man, fuck. I think it's sucking on my mom's tits, <laughs> dude. It is the shit. It's sweeter than a mango. I draw pictures of her tits. I touch her tits when I wake up. I mean, who fucking does that? I don't know. I think it's a healthy development to separate your, especially when you have boys. I don't know what it does to girls to do this to them. But even last night, Essie was like, you know, and the babies, they like to play with, they, yeah. they touch them, they're fatty and yeah. they, they're laughing and yeah. stuff, but they know that it's, uh, they're not still sucking no. on my titties, you know what I mean? So what do you think is the right age then? To mm. stop never. Never. Apart from West Hillian. I don't think anyone should ever stop back here. Yeah. Yeah. What are these two mush mouth saying? I don't even understand what these... They will not. These two mush mouth kids, do you understand what the fuck they're saying? Yeah, I do. I'm happy, happy. Breastfeed when they go to college or get married. It's never happened. It's never going to happen. Once you're out in that big bad world... I don't think anyone should ever stop back here. Yeah. Never. They won't breastfeed forever. It's just that simple. They will not breastfeed when they go to college or get married. It's never happened. It's never going to happen. Once you're out in that big bad world, that's it. There is no safe haven like being at mother's breast. Mm. That's, a, that's not unusual amongst breastfeeding families either. You know, baby on one side, husband on the other. You know, you've just got to keep everyone happy, don't you? The only thing is that the breasts then think, oh, we've got... <laughs> A very big baby there to feed will make some more. So and you get a very, very counterproductive. And a very fat husband as well. <laughs> huh? Mm. Wait, what? Is he sucking her tits too? It sounds like it. This bitch is feeding the whole family with these tits? Because you emptied your boobs. <laughs> Eliza thinks I've emptied my breasts and that's why she yeah. doesn't get any milk out. But it's that she's actually losing the ability to suck. I did suck. Probably this morning and I got no milk. Well, I think it's lovely that you're going to have a new part of your life to go into. That you're going to grow up to be a big girl now. I don't want to be big. What do you I want, want breast milk. It's very rare that a clip upsets me this much. I know. On this show. I know. Well, trying to keep them developmentally behind, which is what this is doing, is not cool. No. To be seven and still breastfeeding? Is dad is like, I like them titties too. Like that milk. Ugh. Ugh. Hey, Pete, I'm going to try some breast milk out now. Okay? <laughs> we had some. Uh, my old lady shared the pump because uh, the other night we went and had a couple of drinks or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, test this little, little, little bread milk out. All right. That's a big sip, bro. Yeah. Uh. No, he's Come on, joking. Dog. He's joking. It's got to be something else. I got re to read nutrition facts on that one. Hey, that shit is hidden, boy. Hold on. <laughs> no. Hey, that shit is hidden, boy. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, boy. I see why my baby be... Ah. Uh. <laughs> my old lady pulled her breast out. Well, you know, I'm gonna go back there. And... 
Okay. It is sweet. It's yeah. sweet. It's good. <sighs> Oof. Yeah, it's I, I guess developmentally not good. You can drink too much breast milk. <laughs> you can drink too much. <laughs> the fuck are you doing? It says drink too much here. I didn't know. Hold on. You're right. such a liar. I switched it. I didn't know what it was. Babe. I didn't know what it was. It says drank too much. Whoa. So describe what you're seeing. Um, there's a big pile, like a mud hill. Just a mound of dirt and mud. And this guy is forcefully fisting it, it seems like. Oh, and now he's lowering his uh, speedo. And he is <laughs> he's laying on the mud and the dirt. And he is uh, thrusting it now. He's humping it. Where is this from? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is wild. There's people walking around. Yeah, I should that, point that this out. This is an outdoor music festival. It this is. looks like Ari Shafir, doesn't it? It kind of does look like Ari. And it's also something that I think Ari would do. Oh, he's done. I respect it, though. <laughs> I respect it. I respect this guy more uh, than the breastfeeding lady. I do, too. I do. I really do. He handled what he needed to do. Well, doesn't Ari go to Bonnaroo and stuff? He does. Hello? Ari would do this. Yeah. Ari would do that. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. That Honestly, there's like a 45% chance that's Ari. <laughs> like, we haven't punched in. I don't know. There is a chance. <laughs> I do. I mean, I've never seen this before where somebody digs a hole in the dirt and then they put their penis in it. I mean, I don't imagine the friction is enough. How do you know you're digging yeah. not too fast? I mean, it's kind of hole? slippery, though, because it's like it looks like mud. So it's probably like kind of, you know what I mean? Oh, so it fits, it fits you around. You think this pile of sand looks lubricated? <laughs> Could be. No? Mm -mm. I'm not seeing oh. it. Maybe I thought it was kind of wet. Is it not wet? Didn't that looks wet to you? <laughs> yeah, from here I don't have glasses oh, on. Okay, no, 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 no. That looks like a really dry pile of sand. Oh, <laughs> so it probably hurts his peener to hump dry sand. Yeah, he looked pretty satisfied to me. <laughs> he seemed happy. Have you ever rubbed dry sand on your peener like that? No. I, I mean, I. But also, like, how worked up is he? Maybe he's backed up for a couple of weeks, you know, and <laughs> he's, he's just, worked up. he was like, I got to fuck. Like, he saw these people walking around. He's like, no one's going to fuck me here. Let's just go fuck that hill. It's so amazing. Yeah. And then broad daylight. See, human beings are amazing. Not humans, men. Men. True. Men are amazing. Let's That's what I meant to say. Let's make the distinction here. Men are amazing. <laughs> women, not so much. You would never see a woman dig a dildo. Because women or... are stupid and they don't. <laughs> Uh, invent things they're not you know innovators okay <laughs> women should clean up properly yes what they should say? Yes. don't drink tap water unprompted unprompted <laughs> yes yeah it's true will you save that clip for drew i would like to show him the guy fucking a sand hole yeah you got it <laughs> yeah it's pretty amazing um yeah people are Unbelievable. You know? I used to hear of a guy who had a mattress and then he would put a peanut butter sandwich in between the, you know, you have two mattresses, uh -huh. a box spring, and he put a sandwich there and then he'd fuck the sandwich. And that to me seems a better idea than sand. Why does that seem like a better idea? It's softer, hmm. maybe lubricated, like we were saying, a maybe more hospitable environment to the penis than a sand. That's true. What would you prefer to? A peanut butter sandwich or a <laughs> pile of dirt? Is that what you're asking me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm asking you that. <laughs> but hold on. Let's do a scenario check. But here's the diff, okay? Okay. You're really fired up. You're so fucking horny. Like, okay. you, a, a horniness you've never known. Okay. You've got two options. You do what this guy is doing in the dirt. <laughs> you do what Ari just did. Or I give you the sandwich and you do the sandwich in the between the mattress scenario, but with an audience. We sell tickets and people get to watch you fuck the sandwich. The other scenario. It's just, what, the dirt? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sell tickets to it, if you don't mind. Okay, what if I don't make it for profit? What if it's just... A charity fuck? Just, you're doing it and then just strangers can walk in and see you 
doing it in this hotel mo- motel No, nah, I'll pass. <laughs> cool, are we done? Can you walk me through your logic a little? I mean... I don't want people <laughs> to come see me fuck a sandwich. But they're seeing you fuck the sand hole. No, nah, it's different. <laughs> I mean, they're just passing by and... I mean, if they come and watch me fuck a sandwich in a hotel room, it feels a lot more intimate. It's like, I'm, I <laughs> want you to, this is like, people are going to go, you know. If you had to choose what kind of sandwich to fuck, what type, would you choose pastrami? No. Why? No. You said that so fast. That's not going to feel good. <laughs> talking about. <laughs> I don't want to fuck a pastrami sandwich in front of everybody. But it looks like. More like a vagina than any other meat source. Don't you think? Mm. Yeah, a little bit. You know what this actually looks like? I know I'm looking at it again. Hmm. This kind of looks like the... the. I feel like this is like the Rat King, like Theo's video. With <laughs> uh, <laughs> This guy has a similar look. Let me oh, go back. Yeah, it could be him. Um, is this Road Rules? Was this Road Rules? What season was he? Road Rules 8 <laughs> or 7? Well, this is when they took it to the dirt. He needs to have his midget next to him. Road though. rule seven: take it to the dirt. <laughs> his midget. Yeah. What was his? He was he? He's like he does like a a macho man thing where he's like, "Hey, brother." <laughs> <laughs> so, ugh. Yeah. Rick wouldn't even have to pull out the turkey slicer. That shit would just you roast it from the top. You but know? he looks like he he needs to eat that turkey because he's low in iron man. or something. Got low. He looks efficiency. T cell counts about seven. <laughs> <laughs> you need to fucking eat some vitamins, bro. Yeah. Before you come talk shit to Rick. This shit is over. Over. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Hi, I'm Christina from Jewelers, and I got to be one of the lucky ones to test the space shield out in our store. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, we can move in this. They are protected, we're protected. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> This is a, a jeweler. Jeweler. It looks like her name's Christine, like mine. Hi, I'm Deborah, and I was very lucky to be chosen to come and shop today. I actually had a great experience. The shield made me feel very comfortable. As a mother of three, when I go out shopping, I'm so afraid that I'm going to get the virus and give it to my children. But after this experience, I feel great about shopping again. Wow. Oh, that was really what cool. a positive message. Well, right on? I would love to try that. <laughs> Looks I'll great. Say, oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Looks normal. <laughs> wow. Dude, you have to see this fucking thing. It's so good. I'll take it. It looks like uh, <laughs> like a they cut up a sandwich container from a grocery store <laughs> and like taped it together <laughs> on her chest and face. And she has to wear a harness to wear it. Do you see that, Tommy? Yeah. It's just wearing like a back brace. It, it's not light. I doubt it. Ugh, it's terrible. That's terrible. I'd rather get Rona than wear that fucking dumb thing. Oh my god, that's right? so embarrassing. Yeah, that's I would definitely that. rather never shop again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they were like, "This is the option you have." Let me tell you, when I worked at Starbucks, there was a rumor that they were gonna make us wear hair nets. I was like, "Nah, dude, I'm gonna fucking quit before I wear a fucking hair net as yeah. a barista." This shit is. Te- this is so humiliating. This is way worse than the hair net, even. Yeah. No. And she's wearing a mask and the shield. You don't think that's overkill? It's a bit much, but that's how much they want you to come buy shit at their store. They're uh, like, <laughs> we will overkill this so that you feel safe. Oh, yeah. wow. That's definitely what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. But did they send out the email to Black Lives Matter? Well, they, they hired a black lady to be in the commercial. <laughs> that's true. They're on the right team. They're okay. like, will you come? As long as they're signaling the right team. Will you be the one? <laughs> Will you be black and shop here <laughs> for our commercial? We support. <laughs> Can you tell how much we care? <laughs> we care a lot. Um, so I finally uh, finished the Garth Brooks doc. I'm- cool stuff, slick stuff, neat stuff. I should point out <laughs> that many people may have seen this when it originally aired because people were talking about it like it's new. It's mm. not new. It's new on Netflix, but it did air last year on A and E, I think. So I remember seeing little snippets of it last year. But I didn't watch it, so I just finished it, and I thought he cried a lot after episode one. <laughs> oh no, more tears, dude! 
I fell asleep. I couldn't watch it's it. It's unbelievable. Have you finished it? Have you watched it? Mm-mm. It is unbelievable how much this guy cries. I'm not kidding you. He cries <laughs> about everything that he brings up. He oh, literally no. cries Do, about. Does any of it feel justified? Uh, yeah. I mean, at part, like, look, cry, I'm not saying like, you know, crying is healthy. Some things make you emotional and you cry. It's a little off-putting that you're like, everything makes you like he talks about growing up and being you know when he reminisces about family life cries talks about his dad anytime he talks about his dad cries Mm. anytime talks about his mom cries talks about writing a song cries talks about his children cries talks about his wife cries talks about uh what a fan interaction was like cries talks about being on this tour cries Talks about not being sure how the tour would go. Cries. Talks about that it was a huge success. Cries. Talks about the Hall of Fame. Cries. Talks. Okay. I mean, All right. it's, it's just, just a lot. It's and every I'm, single thing makes you cry. I mean, he's very. I didn't realize how in touch. He I didn't was. know he was that emotional. I really didn't. I will give him props on something. I think, I'm, honestly, I think he's a wonderful father. Like really? Yes. Well, if you watch it, you go like, oh, he's a really, really great Why? dad. Why would it? Would it what? I mean, you could just tell that he really ad- like he adores his daughters. He they interview the kids, and they uh, you could tell that they genuinely love him. And you know, when he he retired uh, after this massive tour, it was late '90s, early 2000s, and he was like a huge, you know, was at the peak of his career, and things were going sideways at home with his wife, his first wife, and kids. So he moved to Oklahoma. And uh, he didn't work, like, didn't tour, didn't record for 14 years just to raise his kids. Wow. And, like, and so the parents divorced and they saw their kids. They lived in the same town. The kids would switch houses every night. They talk about it in the, in the wow. special. But they, their whole thing was that the kids would see both parents every morning and every night. So what would happen was if they spent the night at the mother's house, dad would pick them up in the morning for uh so they would get up have breakfast he would come in they would eat and then he would take them to school wow and then after school since they'd spend the night at the mom's house they would come to his house and the mom would come for dinner so they would have dinner together and they would spend the night and the next morning the mom would pick them up and they would do the same thing so every morning and every night they would have both parents that's really special that's very sweet Taking 14 years sweet. off the career, that's got to be hard on the ego, too. Uh, for sure, yeah. Especially for men, they're really... Yeah, and then he, he talked yeah. about, like, they were wondering how, when he announced his tour, his first tour back, they were like, well, who knows if they'll still buy tickets? You know? Oh, right. Like so you, there's it, that. It, it had been, yeah. like, over a decade and a half, and they announced the tour, and it was like bigger than ever before it was better. wow yeah. see now i've got to watch the rest of it it's a fascinating story I but mean, here's the thing i i do find him to be so uh, bullshit that that's my problem there's so much inauthenticity in him i i just i want to know the, the truth well, i want to know the real real and i don't know that he's telling me the truth so you, have, you have to watch it to decide if he's now, telling the truth i would say an interesting analysis with dr drew yeah we, not, we talked about it in further depth on dr drew after dark he brought Let up. Can you? Conversation begin. I know. Can you bring up the, what we were watching and that Drew noticed, which was fascinating. Um, so he had a different perspective on what's going on, and I think it's really interesting. And now that you say the crying thing, it kind of makes more sense. Really? Yes. The crying so, thing is so intense. It's usually I feel like you would watch a show like this. And one of those things I brought up would make you cry. Maybe talking about your children or yeah. your parents who are no longer here. I get that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, this is, a, this is from the show. So uh, Drew noticed, he goes, look at that. Look at his jowls, right? Like he's mm-hmm. got some jowls yeah. here. And then he goes, pull up a younger picture of Garth. And we looked up a younger picture of Garth and he doesn't have these jowls. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And look at his eyes. Okay? They're not very clear they're kind of alcoholic-y eyes, would you say? Uh-huh. And Drew's theory is that he's drinking a lot. If you look at now the belly. Or before. Well, no, he's been drinking for years. He thinks that he's got a drinking thing. Well, he talks about his mother having a drinking problem. Uh-huh. 
So there you go. He might have inherited, which would make sense. Like he's a sad. I mean, look how sad he is. What I and and Drew's interpretation was from that prism of alcoholism, mm-hmm. maybe repressing a lot of emotions. And then when somebody, what are you laughing? Are you no, no, no. Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm just listening. And like when someone sits down and asks you, like maybe nobody asks Garth about this kind of shit in his life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then sure. you do like an interview like this and it all comes up because he's been stuffing this shit down. Yeah, he wants to. Years. He wants to have these conversations. Right, because I don't know if anybody in his life is really having these. Con- uh, look, Trish is eating her feelings. We know that. So he's probably doing the same. You know, they're not. That. These two are not good with feelings. Put it that way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did he and Trish have kids too, or just no. from the first? Yeah. Just he just has okay. his three daughters. Yeah. So. Yeah. She so was look. real cute, by the way. Trisha. When he met her, like they show the photo, she was really cute. And then they stopped having feelings. Oof. That's not Trisha. That's the first wife, right? Yeah. Yeah. He likes blondes. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it could be alcohol. He's drinking. That's what Drew was. Really. Yeah. I believe it. Mm. It would make sense. The weepiness. Like, you know, he's got a lot of sadness and he's got a dark side that he's not embracing. Remember that whole Chris Gaines alter ego? They thing? talk about that. You got to watch it, dude. You got to watch it. I know. It. I will. I will. I know. I keep falling asleep at night. I'm so tired by the time I go to uh, lay down with you at night. Yeah. Um. Anyways, interesting stuff. Yeah. If it's one thing we stand for here at your mom's house. It is a clean beehole. Mm. And that's why we're huge fans of the Tushy. The Tushy is a bidet attachment that clips onto your existing toilet and sprays your beehole completely with clean, fresh water. Because you know what? When you when you take a, a sloppy brown like I did this morning, or you can't just take dry paper and mush, mush the Yuck. caca. Forget about it. That's how you get uh, UTIs, itchy assholes, skid marks, hemorrhoids, yeast infections. Forget about it. Get the tushy. It cleans your beehole. And forget wet wipes. People say, why don't you use it? No. Wet wipes are terrible for the environment. They cause anal fissures. And you don't want that beautiful anus of yours fissuring. Um, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. Try the tushy now. Here's what you're going to do. It's only $79. Go to hellotushy.com slash your mom to get 10% off your order. Tushy. Yeah, Can yeah. we watch some TikTok? Just hold on a second. Jeez. You always want to rush right to the docs. Well, I do love them. They are my passion in life. It's more about are you ready to eat? Check this out. So I ordered <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings mango habanero and it's super mm. super hot and i can't wait to try the poop the feces the shit that i dump out and eat it and taste it to see if it's still <laughs> super super hot <laughs> so for those of you who don't already know i love to use this example uh, of eating my feces to test out my theories of what is the ego and how i can further suppress it So if you have any questions, definitely visit my website at IamDung.com to discover more intriguing stories and comments and videos of what I love to do. Which is eat my own shit. No, suppressing her ego. She's trying to, it's a spiritual quest. Can you pull up that website on your computer just to see what comes up there? IamDung.com. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty cool. But she does raise a good point. What's up? <laughs> I'm just seeing some of these thumbnails, and it is quite worrying. What's the worrying part? She has a mud mask on? Yeah. Yeah, the, that's a type of mud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, she is doing a good job killing her ego, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and also, I'm curious to I thought know. she was talking about the eco, like the ecosystem. Oh, I, I thought ego. No? Okay. Ego, it's spiritual. Okay, I didn't hear it clearly. I, I'm wondering, I mean, this is what the great <laughs> the great pe- spiritual leaders did. They, you ruined Is the eating ego. dung good for you? It doesn't hurt. Really? It can't hurt. Remember, we, we've learned this. It's not good. What'd you say? Doesn't help. <laughs> well, I, but I wonder if her theory is correct that when you eat spicy, it makes your poo-poo spicy. I wonder if that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Now I got to know. Okay. I don't know. I'm kind of fascinated that somebody would do this. 
I mean, oh, okay. Oh, boy. That's interesting. Oh, She's so happy. She really is. What's it say underneath? Like, does it, is there an article? Yeah, what does she say? Uh, <clears throat> I've been inundated by messages and letters wanting to learn more about my psychedelic substance trips and fascination with dung. Mm-hmm. All right, this is making a lot more sense. <laughs> Okay. I want to clarify some things with respect to what many of you are categorizing as a ridiculous eating disorder in need of a mental evaluation. I would ask you to please study my materials and compound them into a critical analysis supportive of an authoriz- authorization worthy of scientific religious health related report. When you do this, you will discover this is not my personality. Hmm. I don't have an eating disorder or a mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. What I know and have learned is the extent. Okay. Man is always... Ain't nobody got $10,000 tips like me. (laughs) (laughs) Not sensing drugs, but I end sensing something's wrong. Me too. I'm going to go mentally ill. I think you're right. No neuropathy problems at all. Yeah. I think this is a (laughs) mentally ill person. I think we can uh, we can close their tab now. Case closed. <laughs> yeah, I don't even need if we need Doctor. Do we need Doctor Drew to I assess? Think so. I think we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> huh? But that chicken wing does look tasty, and I hope she enjoyed it. Yeah. And I can't kill you. And the poop, the feces, the shit. Yeah, we know, bitch. We yeah. know. All right. You ready to shift into some fun? Yeah. I heard you bitches was looking for me. <laughs> All right, I haven't seen these in a minute, Mm -hmm. so let's see what's up with your talks. New lanes have come about since the uh, pandemic and and recent changes in in our world, and it's fascinating. The talk is the pulse. Part two, if you're going to fall in love with me, and I'm doing this on my own volition. So part two is, do you really think you can deal with my TikTok wife? <laughs> Do you think you can deal with my my daughter's life? <laughs> my walls are up. I'm hard to break down. I'm not gonna play any fucking games <laughs> okay. with anybody. All right. I don't do drama, and I never will. Okay. This is part two of if you fall in love with me. Uh huh. <laughs> you have to deal with the fact that I run my own detail business and wrench on cars. And that I am a fucking natural flirt. It's not something I can change. But I'm always going to come home to you. I'm never going to lie or cheat on you. This is part two. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> I love you. And I'm, uh, amazing. That's an amazing Thank find. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, he did point out Thank that you. he uh, he wants he have to you have to deal with my TikTok life, and then later my daughter. <laughs> right, my, these walls my, are up. Mine and my, my and my daughter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, these walls. Are, I'm hard to break down. <laughs> Wait, and I like how he kind of burps in his own mouth. Oh at yeah, the beginning. It start, he's, he's like, like, like <laughs> and he didn't go. I should take that one from the top. <laughs> Part two. If you're gonna fall in love with me, and I'm doing this on my own volition. Volition. So part two is. <laughs> Do you really think you can deal with my TikTok wife? So part two is, do you really think you can deal with my TikTok wife? <laughs> you really think you can deal with my TikTok wife? Wait, he doesn't even acknowledge it. No. Like he just talks through the burp. Yeah. That's really drunk. And this right? is, like, you realize, too, that oh, the God. message is to potential <laughs> suitors, right? It's like, <laughs> Ladies, do you want to love me? <laughs> There's it's probably chicks out there who are like, hmm, that's pretty cool the way you belched in your mouth and kept talking <laughs> in that video. <laughs> about at me oh my stomach hurts yeah i like that you know what i like about this talk is the subtlety 
is those little things like that. Yeah. He's not aware of, of anything, which really helps. You said deal with his TikTok life? What does that even mean? So a big thing on the talk is where people have partners that don't understand that they might like to duet with other talkers, that they are on the talk and that they might get DM'd or hit up by oh, right. potential yeah. other people. By the way, I love, like, I'm a natural flirt and that's not going to change. <laughs> he's a natural. He's a natural flirt. Yeah, I <laughs> flirt a lot. Never a natural flirt. I'm a flirt. <laughs> I'm a flirt. <laughs> I'm flirt. <laughs> you guys, I just want to tell you, I'm not gay. I love my fiance so much. <laughs> now, what we call in the <laughs> FBI is a tell. You know, sometimes people, they say a statement, but then they have a tick. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know him. I don't know what his baseline is. But if someone goes, I'm not gay, I'm a fiance, I love her so much. And then they like have a tick. Mm -hmm. It's probably not true. That's not necessarily statement true. Statement before the tick. No, I mean, people have, I mean, it could have been his nose itched. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch it again. You guys, I just want to tell you, I'm not gay. I love my fiance so much. I I move and then no okay I I just thought it was a pretty <laughs> standard I think not it's true. still interesting in and of itself I, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a tell okay okay <laughs> that's it well here's the thing. Is that it makes you wonder what's the motivation behind posting? I'm not wondering. A talk like this. Like, he's an attractive young man. Do you think he'd want girls to find him attractive? <laughs> the answer is no. To post this on the talk, you've really got not, you don't You're care. You're not thinking about pussy at all. At all. No. Or dick. Like, right. what are you thinking of? He's probably thinking, like, I take pretty impressive shits and people need to see it. I'm guessing, but this is a rare find in a, a in a king ass ripper sort of lane. Yeah. Like the guy that posts this for the world to see is pretty special. He's unique. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I knew you like him. I you. love it. I knew you like this one. Yes. Yeah. Showing you stacks. Oh, oh, you're missing it. You're missing the tongue. Ugh. Hey, girls. From TikTok and Instagram, it's Tony Soprano, the best looking at die in the world. Nobody bad looking at me from Fairlawn, New Jersey. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. He took a bunch of ones and he wrapped it in a Honda. How'd you guess? <laughs> I, you also love that he, uh, like, he's like, this will get them to lap it yeah. up. Just, Just money. Show them the money. Because women need to pick up unprompted. I mean. Yeah. He's a cool, the cool guy. He's really cool. He picked a good am angle for his face, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all flattering. And you know what Looking I really. On it. What women generally really respond to. What? <laughs> I have money. I'll lick your puss. I'm shirtless. I'm in shape. Yeah. Everybody loves a good tongue wag to uh, really get you in there. And he also went, <laughs> at one point. <laughs> it was a I Really? <laughs> Best looking Italian. Oh, this hey, is an update. I just want to explain <laughs> this tattoo process. The first time they did it, they did a frosting to kind of get the top layer of skin. Then they just go deeper and deeper into the skin uh, by turning it up. Hmm. This last time was 5.5, and I don't know what happened, but it, it really got to me. And they're going to crank it up to 6.0 <laughs> to go a lot deeper. And if I sit out in the sun just right, you can see how much... Mm. It's really faded. Whoa. I mean, it's. <laughs> yeah. You can see yeah. skin in a lot of spots. I mean, yeah. You can see you skin. Even look, you can see some skin on my nose. Oh, that's exciting. Some spots. I mean, 
It's getting there. Love y'all. So that was an update from our Juggalo guy who had the face tats. And it, things are really moving along. You can barely see those dark shaded black bars on your eyes, around your mouth, on your nose. You can see skin now. <laughs> this one made me real sad today. <laughs> Do you see the progress? But you can see better in the sun. It does look better around his mouth. I will say it does look lighter in his chin there. Yeah. That looks, that does right look better. Right now I'm better. like, oh, did you just do your first procedure? <laughs> Was right. that day one? He's like, no, I've been going for about 16 weeks. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. No, this is yeah. a year, six months. No. He's got know. a long way to go, but bless his heart. because He must have been so into drugs before. <laughs> he really must have been so into drugs. Uh-uh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to keep hurting. He was like, that really got to me. And they're going to dial it up. <laughs> Why isn't he just growing? He should just grow out a beard. Oh, you know? that's not a bad idea. Because then you only have to do the under the eyes, above the eyes, the eyebrows <laughs> above the eyes, the side cheeks, the tip of the nose, the tip of the nose. Then yeah. you've got all just all that stuff to do. <laughs> He walks around every day like this. <laughs> this That's the thing. We, wa soul. we watch him for 10 seconds. I know. This motherfucker gets up and probably forgets sometimes, you know? Oh. I'm sure he forgets. Like, he'll walk down the street and he's like, oh, there's a fucking coffee place. Walks in. Hey, can I get? And then he sees people <laughs> go like. I mean, he has to be like, oh, yeah, my fucking face. <laughs> I did all this shit to my face. Yeah. You know, I had a dream last night and this is a reoccurring dream I have mm -hmm. that I'm covered in tattoos. Yeah, you mentioned that. I've had this so many times. Do you times. think it's because you're so deep in the world of TikTok <laughs> that it's really the talks speaking it, to you? It, uh, well, it might be because I found some really crazy shit lately in the world of tattoos and piercings and things. Yeah. But I and I dreamt that your your sisters were making fun of me for my tats, and then I got blackout drunk, and yeah, it was really neat. Yeah. yeah. But there were shit tattoos like tribal, the 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 bands, you know. Yeah. And it was really bad. <sighs> Can I fucking help you? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah. Fuck off, fat ass. Go work out instead of supporting Trump. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sign for hate. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Fuck off. <laughs> Do you want me to cough on you? Because I will. <laughs> what a fucking what asshole. <laughs> what I do with my stimulus check? I pay my fucking bills, the fuck? <laughs> fuck Trump. He's a bitch. Just like you. That guy, though, next to her, he's like, do you really have to do this all the time? I know. <laughs> like, he's like, shut the fuck can up. Can you just let him roll by? Yeah, just shut <laughs> like, up. Like, she's such an asshole. <laughs> Every guy's been out with someone like that, you know? Every guy is like, Jesus Christ. Well, because that girl's never been in a fight before. Like, exactly. she's never been hit, so she's like, exactly. uh, she doesn't know that she can get yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, he is like, if this fucking bitch gets off her wheelchair, you're fighting her. Yeah, I'm not going to beat up this old lady. <laughs> well, the neatest part about this whole video is how did they get to the, these are two fat people on motorized scooters and they're on the beach. They're on hilarious. They, it yeah, is a hilarious like, setting because they're how do you get that on the beach? They're wildly obese. They're on motorized <laughs> carts with Trump flags and an American flag. Yeah, <laughs> they're so like weird. 380 pound people and they're just like, oh. <laughs> Rolling down, like I don't know how they got down. And then what are you doing? That's, yeah, what are you like? Why are and she's you? Like, did you get your stimulus check? <laughs> what did you do with your stimulus check? Did you spend it? <laughs> yeah, that's what Trump sent you. I know it's <laughs> okay. so weird. The whole thing. <laughs> cool talking point. Did you get your stimulus check? <laughs> you spend that money. <laughs> me me. <laughs> <laughs> What a fucking pig. What a world. What a wonderful <laughs> world. Pig on wheels. 
Uh, I would be so embarrassed to to ride in that motorized scooter if it if the reason I was had to use one is because of my own fatness. I'm yeah. so embarrassed. Like, yeah, I don't think I could go out in that thing. Aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> yeah, you can't even walk. <laughs> I just wouldn't go outside. I would just stay inside and get so fat and just die on my couch. Like I wouldn't even want to go to the beach. You know. Me me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! Yeah, that's so crazy. Did Trump send you your money? <laughs> God. Yeah. I'm bored. I want a boyfriend so I can have somebody to talk to, and then we can go dancing. No, we can't go dancing. No way. Oh, wasn't she cute? I don't know. That's such a sweet old person thing to say. I know. I want to go dancing with someone. I know. Nobody does. No one really no says one like, that. "Let's go dancing." These That's another. Are... By the way, it reminded me. Remember we talked to my dad about his cool flirting techniques. Yeah. One time, yeah. I remember I made the mistake of I was talking to him. I was in college, and I go, you know, you know, how you have like your own thing where you're like, "This is things I share, and these are things I don't." And then I just let my guard down. I was like, "Yeah, you know, I went out with this girl, but then I." I, uh, whatever, I just didn't call her and now I regret it. And you know, it's been a while and blah, blah. Like I just shared with him and he's like, well, why don't you call her? And I go, For, what do you mean? Tell her, you know. <laughs> uh, I go, well, what would I say? He's like, call her and say, you know, I think you're a nice gal and I'd like to take you out. Yeah. And, you know, and he was like, go dancing or oh. I'd like to see you again. <laughs> and I was like, you want me to say that? Well, say it how you want to say it. I go, you're a nice gal. And I'd like to take you to do the jitterbug. And he's like, yeah. Like, okay, thanks for the advice, man. <laughs> I would like that. You can take me out to do yeah? the jitterbug. You want to go dancing? Yeah. You can go dance sometime. No dancing. How's Linda? <laughs> you ever see Linda? What? How is Linda? <laughs> <laughs> this is the old person batch? Yeah, uh. I just think the elderly are an untapped font of yeah. hilarity. And, you know, TikTok doesn't want you to laugh at the elderly. I know. They don't. I think they're just a that was sweet. wonderful resource. She yeah. yelled that into her ear. How's Linda? And she went. Uh, didn't hear a fucking That's thing. fucked up. You can't even hear stuff when you're that old. That's the worst part. I'm not on drugs. I'm you drinking, yeah. I got my beer right over here. <laughs> I don't see a problem with that. I'm 35 years old. And I'm working my butt off. Yeah. But I can't stand these people on here talking about people. Yeah. Oh, wait, my favorite is, I'm not on drugs. I am drinking, but I can't because I'm 35 years old. Mm -hmm. Tom, don't you get it? Yeah. She's 35. She, she looks good. <laughs> 35 killer years so far. <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone who has never seen snap-in dentures on mini implants, I will show you what it looks like when I take them out. Okay. This is how they look in. Okay. They look good. You snap them right out. These are the O-rings that snaps into the mini implants. Right there. They look like, kind of like piercings. I have six on the top, four on the bottom. And I need to snap them back in. So I can take them out and clean them myself. I just take them out after I eat every day. But I sleep with them in every night and they stay in my mouth like 24-7. And I love the shit out of them. They look great. They look great. They look great. That's amazing. She looks very right? pretty. Yeah. She's very pretty. So I'm, I, I, you know, I don't know if there's a history of drug use and maybe she had to have her T3 done, but. Yeah, it could be something else. Could get be, them, you know. I don't know, medical. Yeah. yeah. But they look really amazing. And I just thought that was interesting to see how they. I've never seen that snap before. Snap in. I didn't know that. I've never seen that. Really. She's, and they look nice. Yeah. They dig. They, it's a That's good job. That's a princess glitter head. Yeah. All right. She looks good. That's great. Oof. Okay, oh. so we needed two videos, apparently. So I'm getting it removed by <laughs> Invisible Ink Tattoo Removers in Carmel, Indiana. 
Um, and then to add on to the dysphoria situation, um, I am not too proud to admit that sometimes people do things in haste, and I was in a different mindset when I did this tattoo. I don't hate it, per se. Um, it's just not, doesn't fit with what I'm doing further in life. And, you know, if I had it to do over again, and I was able to transition years ago, uh, or more, you know, more than eight, I probably, I wouldn't have done it, obviously. Um, I'm doing it in conjunction with other facial feminization surgeries, like lip, lip augmentation. I can't say lip today. Lip augmentation, cheek, um, implants, uh, forehead and brow, uh, shave and lift, uh, chin reconstruction, oh etc. So, yeah, one life to live, and I'm living it as best as I can. So Well, thanks for... <laughs> And bringing this one to light. Jesus Christ, This babe. one is insane. So this person is transitioning to a female. So he's got, you know, gender or trans stuff. And then the face is tattooed. His tongue is bifurcated. And the nose? Which means cut in half. And then it looks like there was a plug in the side of the nose. It's an enormous and hole. And now it's a hole. Yeah. You know, those don't close up, what we learned from Drew. Uh, so if you get plugs and stuff and you stretch out that skin, it doesn't, it never, s never shuts. So think twice about getting that stuff. Yeah. Isn't that gnarly? Oh, oh, and his eyeballs are tattooed red. The whites of his eyes are red, which you can't see here. This poor, this poor soul. Can we look at the next one? <laughs> Why are y'all so worried about my... Why are y'all so worried about my goddamn teeth? Worry about your life, bitch. <laughs> I knew you'd like that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're worried because you're young and attractive and you could probably look a lot better Ugh. if you had teeth, you know? Ugh. You're too young. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. We're sexually attracted to people with dark personality traits. Evidence suggests that men and women are sexually attracted, at least in the short term, to potential partners displaying psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. And the trait that had the most effect on attraction was psychopathy. In some cases, a man's physical attractiveness to women was increased when he was described as self-interested, manipulative, and insensitive. And physical attractiveness is often automatically associated with a host of other positive traits, what psychologists call the halo effect. When we perceive somebody as physically attractive, we automatically assume that they're also kinder, smarter, and more confident. Combining physical attractiveness with confidence and humor is even more effective. And it appears that people with more exploitative personalities are more successful at this as well. There you go. That's why I'm attracted to you. Mm. Which leads me to this email I received a while back. Hi, Christina. I think Tom has Asperger's. I think that because Tom and I are very similar and I have Asperger's. Yes, that's a form of autism. It's also hereditary and very important to be diagnosed early. That being said, it might also help Tom understand himself better. All I ask is that you take me seriously and look into it. I'm not going to link anything. Anyway, do your own research. I implore you. Uh, this is because you're laughing at the stuff that's violent. The um, the man getting his legs crushed video. And yeah. this, this gentleman says you might have a mild Asperger. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that that guy knows what the fuck he's talking about. He has Asperger, so he's diagnosing you. Because mm, I laughed at a video? Just something to consider. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to my doctor about it. <laughs> hey, doc. <laughs> a guy sent in an email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You think I'm Asperger's? No, not at all. Um, I know somebody who's, we both know a couple people. For sure. Yeah. There's a few people. No, I don't think you're Asperger's. I do think you enjoy, um, I think there's a little bit of unchecked cruelty and anger in you that society hasn't squashed and you like to watch it. Like you, you've tapped into the darkness inside of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look like you're going to kill me right now. No, no, I was, I was listening. I mean, I just think that you enjoy the dark side of the force a little in, in yourself, and you're not ashamed of it. That's true. And I don't know if that's a fault. I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think so. I just, because I enjoy these, and these are pretty fucking dark. 
Yeah. I remember I, you know, yeah. I gave a speech when I was in high school that if somebody is bothersome to you, you can just kill them. Mm. And it was in the, uh, it was a speech contest and I got to the finals. Oh, wow. And then when I gave the speech at the finals, it was in front of a lot of people <laughs> and there was a little more eyeballs kind of looking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i still have that speech why don't you read it i should gra i should grab it yeah please i'm curious to hear i love to hear that yeah it was like straight up you should just murder people all the time hmm. and did you give like a good argument what was your, your i argument? was just like when people are the the gist of it was basically if i was um 15 or 16 yeah i basically said you know, people always complain about this person and that person. This person makes me feel badly. This person's in the way. This person is stopping me from getting a promotion. I go, you could just kill them, you know? And then I just gave all the, I go, there's so many different ways you can kill people. Right. So I just started talking about, you know, you could poison people, stab them, shoot them, hit them with a car, beat them with a pipe, you know, tie something to them, drown them. Like I just gave all it the- It was for like public speaking class. It was a public speaking class, yeah. 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 And that's funny. I mean, that's a good. S and how long was the speech? I don't know. Like three minutes, five minutes, maybe something like that. Yeah. So you. Were, what I was amazed with was like the first teacher that saw me give it in that first class was laughing hysterically. Yeah. And uh, he was like, "I'm supposed." He was supposed to pick, I think, one, maybe one or two people to go to the next round. And then when he told me, he was like, "You're definitely." I was like, really? <laughs> and then he was like, "Yeah." So then I went to the next round and did it. And then they're like, you're in the finals now. And the finals <laughs> was in front of the entire school, oh my all God. the teachers, everybody. And the kid in front of us, the, the kid who went in front of me was, a se I was a sophomore. He was a senior. And he explained what E equals MC squared means. Oh. Right? So he's like, E equals MC squared is... Yeah. often thought like what does that actually mean i still remember his name was josh robinson he gave that speech and then they were like okay and he explains it and i got up there and i go wasn't josh's speech boring <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and then i was like here's my speech yeah That's you guys awesome. are all lucky to be alive <laughs> wow a young yeah. tom segura you spreading his creative wings like yeah. who knew that would be the foundation for your comedy basically which is like Oh, everyone sucks. I'm normal. I wish I could kill everyone. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. And now we got full circle because that's what I was saying. Like, you enjoy that part of your mind. Yeah. That society puts a chokehold on and doesn't let you act out on. That's the whole part of being socialized is that you don't say or do things like right, that. Right, right. You're not. No. I wonder why you don't. I know why. Why? Well, I'll tell you later. Okay. It's private. There's one last one. Ready? Yeah. Last one. Make no mistake. <laughs> Better not come near my wife. Yeah, her mother and I don't get along. But I will defend what is mine and what is dear to her. God. <laughs> I feel like you would make a talk like that for me. Yeah. Would you do that, that for me? That guy reminded me of... I'm looking for girls for pussy. <laughs> yeah. Would you defend my honor? On I would the talk? defend your honor just like that. Shirtless, laying down. <laughs> my wife, ugh, I'm going to defend her honor. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Good. Well, this was a, f a lot of fun today. Yeah, it was a good time. I had a really good time. Thank you guys. Yeah. For watching, for listening. Uh, please check out merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura. Also, um, I will shortly be announcing, I think. Uh, perhaps a return to the stage. Oh my God. Uh, I'm very excited about. I'm just waiting on confirmation I'm before I. I'm and I'm by. I'm Polly and I'm by. I want a fluid bond with Jesse and I hope you guys will come watch. Um, excited about that. And um, I'm so jealous. I know. Should be fun. Thank you guys for listening. We'll be back next week. All right, Rudy. Bye, Jeans. Bye. How do you think your dad picked up Charles? Well, you gotta get the conversation. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Big tits? Great tits. She's playing bridge. Tits. That's a like father and son. Big tits? Great cans, Tom. Tits. <laughs> this is my entertainment.
salt or pepper? Meat or fish. What's your favorite color? What are you talking about? That's A1. No. You got to get the conversation. <laughs> Mom, show them how those big tits fart. I didn't even think of that option. Show me how those big tits fart. <laughs> Tits. My wife's boobs are so big. Her boobs have gotten so big. I say without you commenting on my tits. Well, you gotta get the conversation. <laughs> the tits, great kit. The tits, great can, Tom. Tits, 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 tits. The tits, great kit. She's playing bridge. Tits, glad to say like father, like son. The tits, great can, Tom. Tits. <laughs> this is my entertainment. Salt or pepper? Meat or fish? What's your favorite color? What are you talking about? That's A1. No. You gotta get the conversation. <laughs> Mom, show them how those big tits fart. I didn't even think of that option. Show me how those big tits fart. <laughs> tits. My wife's boobs are so big. Her boobs have gotten so big. I say without you commenting on my tits. Well, you gotta get the conversation. <laughs> big tits? Great kit. Big tits? Great can, Tom. You're the queen of the toilet. Queen of the toilet. Queen of the toilet. Queen of the toilet. You're the queen of the toilet. Queen of the toilet. Queen of the toilet. Queen of the toilet. Hi, Mommy. Thanks, Jean. Thank you for watching this episode of Your Mom's House. And if you had a great time, watch more videos here, here, here. And don't forget to subscribe here, 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 so that you will know when a Your Mom's House video comes out immediately. Thanks, Jean.